Hello guys, today I will be talking about JavaScript and in particular objects and functions. I will start from uh, from absolute scratch. I mean right now I'm gonna launch my browser. I'm gonna log in to Google, go to mind maps, show you the topics and so on and so forth. After that I will go to Cloud9 uh, to show you the examples. I find this way much uh, much more easier for me. At least I enjoy when the lessons are built this way, so I can follow very easy and uh, see the the path and everything. Okay, so let's go first to Google. Drive Google.com. Okay, I'm gonna sign in. And since I'm keeping my uh, my mind map here, I just have to click on Practical Web Application Development, and uh, MindMaster will be open with my mind map. Even though it takes a little bit longer, I find, as I said, this uh, much easier. So you can uh, easy follow the steps. You don't have to think afterwards. And I also enjoy to watch it this way. Okay, so I have my um, JavaScript Basics branch open. So I should say uh, now welcome to Ninjutsu because right now we are stepping on the path of the ninjas. This is the analogy the people which are doing JavaScript uh, are making because JavaScript is like a martial art I have to mention that I will show you certain techniques and styles but I cannot uh, teach you how to win the battle so once you learn the styles and techniques this will help you very much to solve uh, your problems and secondly I have to tell you that uh, I'm not gonna go very deep into JavaScript JavaScript deserves uh, its own series of lectures so I'm gonna give you just the things I, uh, which I find are the essence of JavaScript for myself so let's start first with the sources of knowledge because as I said I'm not gonna go very very deep in JavaScript my assumption is that you have already used another programming language and I just will show you the differences uh, the easier part which are for example how to create a variable I'll leave for you and also the operators JavaScript is a language which is from the uh, syntax family of the C languages a C language family member if you want to call it this way so uh, it's gonna look very familiar and 10 years ago the people very much used to underestimate JavaScript and everybody who was programming Java or C++ uh, would say yeah I know JavaScript so that's why I'm not gonna describe JavaScript in details I'm gonna show you the sources where we can go and read I just will show you really the stuff which I think is very useful and very different in this first lecture as I mentioned already I'm gonna talk about objects and functions okay so sources of knowledge the first I have to mention David Flanagan I respect very much this guy and what he is doing his book uh, is very good which I'm gonna show you is very good and also his book about Ruby is the best uh, book for programming languages as far as I know okay so um, the book which you must read I think is JavaScript the definitive guide sixth edition I'm gonna show it bigger as you can see there is a rhino on the cover of the book this is the Bible this is the must read you have to read it if you wanna uh, if you wanna use JavaScript I'm gonna mention uh, 
other books as well, but this one is our Bible. Okay, this is David Flanagan. Now I'm gonna show you another um, pillar, if you wanna call it this way, of the JavaScript. This is Douglas Crockford, this guy from uh, Yahoo. It's really very knowledgeable, very open-minded. I like it very much. I like him very much. So his book, JavaScript, The Good Parts, is also very good reading. If you have a chance to read it, please do it. JavaScript has been created for a very short amount of time and that's why it has a very mm, very many disadvantages. Uh, at the same time it's extremely powerful language and Douglas Crockford explains how to use only the good parts of JavaScript and forget about the bad parts. So if you have a chance please read it. Douglas Crockford Another very popular guy is Nicholas Zakas. <coughs> His book with the all is very uh, very nice as well. Stoyan Stefanov again from Yahoo. Nicholas Zakas is also from Yahoo. JavaScript patterns. It teaches you how to use uh, the patterns which we were talking about in the previous lessons but in the world of JavaScript. For example, um, Singleton or Observer or such design patterns which are men mentioned by uh, Eric Gaman in the book, uh, in their design patterns book, Gank of Four, I mean. Here you can find the implementation in JavaScript. Very nice book. Coding standards are also mentioned. Naming standards as well. Uh, you can see on the mind map another book. John Bresick, of course, uh, I have to mention this guy. This is the JavaScript Wunderkind. JavaScript Ninja, this is one recent book written by John Bresick. He explains how to create your own JavaScript library, which is a very, very useful thing. And finally, if you go to the mind map, you'll find here a link to YUI Theater. You go there and watch the videos um, and many things will become clear to you. So this is about the sources of knowledge and now uh, from all these sources I picked it up only few things which I wanna introduce to you right now because I think they're the most important for myself of course. The development with JavaScript. The development with JavaScript is prototype based. It uses the design pattern called prototype. It's from uh, creational patterns, the group of the creational patterns, <coughs> mentioned by Eric Gamma in Gang of Four, as I said. Classless, which is very strange for some people which used to use uh, classes and they like to use classes when they instantiate objects. Object-oriented programming. We are gonna do object-oriented programming with JavaScript even though procedural also is is acceptable. You can do a procedural uh, development as well. Event-driven development. Okay, this is about the development. How the JavaScript looks. So, here we go. I'm gonna show you one example just to show you and give you the taste of JavaScript. It looks a little bit strange for novices which uh, just started with other languages. Look here, I'm using one um, closure. Some authors call this closure. This is done because we don't want to pollute the global namespace in Java, in JavaScript and eventually avoid the collisions and problems. So my recommendation is use this structure to encapsulate, to wrap your JavaScript code. So eventually if you make a mistake, this mistake is not gonna is not gonna be too big. Of course if you use a global variables um, that's evil and it spells disaster but uh, if you wrap your code 
in this uh, in this structure you will have less problems here I demonstrate immediately the event driven development when the event on load has been um, emitted and here one anonymous function which is assigned to this uh, this event as an event listener and we'll discuss the rest later I'm using also the DOOM specification one of the DOOM methods get elements by tag name h1 in the page and I'm uh, looping through all the found elements in the in the DOOM tree and just saying alert elements i as you can see that's it this was just to give you a taste of JavaScript how a little bit strange and odd it looks okay so I'll start right from the important things as I said I'm starting from the functions the lambdas this is another term which is used by Daniel Friedman not only by Daniel Friedman but in the scheme language programming language and I will tell you what is typical for the functions in JavaScript the most important thing to remember is that the functions are first-class objects what that means a function is an instance of the object type maybe I should support all this with examples not only theoretically show you this so let me do that I'm gonna open cloud9 ID and we will be experimenting there first of course I have to log into github because I'm gonna use uh, open ID technology uh, to log into my um, cloud ID cloud9 so let me first log into github I think I already logged it but I will log out because I don't want this account to be used I'm gonna use another account just give me a second to type my credentials my username and my password yeah hopefully it's right we'll see yes okay now I can log in sign in using the github I already have uh, my project which probably you very well know already which is called FMI I have this project already imported here actually cloned here and all I have to do is just start editing why well, prefer cloud 9 for uh, for showing JavaScript this is because cloud 9 allows me to test everything directly in the environment I don't have to push to my development server all the time I'm gonna show you how that works because I did this lection before I already have some of the files open so what I gonna do is I already have created one file which is called index.html and I will describe the way I did it but the most important is I have created a folder which is called Stoyan Cherysharov by my name inside I have CSS, images and JavaScript and right now I'm gonna build um, I'm gonna build everything for this example for this tutorial as I said uh, I've done it already on Bulgarian language for my students in the university so I'm gonna do it for my viewers in the web as well first time doing this for myself and after that for my friends and colleagues and my students okay so here 
I'm uh, telling the browser that I'm gonna use HTML5 I don't need quirk modes HTML hat into the hat I have a title JavaScript experiments loading JavaScript with the tag script type tag JavaScript source just experiment JS of course I don't have this file I'm gonna create it I think I don't have it so I'm gonna create it for you and the link type text CSS uh, I'm also using a CSS okay let's see how everything looks right now so here it is uh, the advantage of cloud 9 I just will say preview and on the right hand side oh I have done it already so um, on the right hand side I see a browser which I can use to show all the things which I'm doing I'm loading experiment CSS so let me create this, fo this file in the CSS folder even though maybe we're not gonna use it at all here it is let's look at here h1 let's make sure that it works we just will say h1 let's make the color red for example we're gonna play today in this tutorial in this lection just follow me h1 color red yeah it should be CSS of course this is what I find more valuable in the tutorials when somebody is working and just uh, allowing me to look at uh, over his shoulder just to see how the things are happening this is uh, what I find very very um, educational and very nice so I can see the errors and the, the mind flow I can see how this guy is thinking so that's why I'm doing this even though it takes a little bit longer I think um, you can forgive me that okay here we go now the CSS is working let me show you now the JavaScript I also have created the JavaScript already so let me comment everything and we will go uh, we will come back to what we where we were before so I just wanted to show you that the function is an instance of the object type uh, let's uh, let's play a little bit and try to do that let's create one function actually I have w already one I'm gonna stop this so here we go I'm not gonna type it uh, again I'm not gonna create the function again uh, we start with the keyword function the name of the function eventually we sent uh, we set the parameters we have one variable inside of the function notice the keyword var which, uh, which, uh, which we um, indicate the fact that this uh, variable, new variable, if we don't put this var this name will be treated like the global variable and will put pollute our global namespace so don't do that use always var in inside of the function unless you wanna um, you wanna use a global variable or you wanna pollute the global namespace okay there there are another interesting things about that but um, we'll talk about this maybe later I don't wanna promise that we're I'm gonna talk about JavaScript maybe I'm gonna create a different series of lectures especially for JavaScript so I'm not promising that uh, I'm gonna mention this uh, in this series of lectures okay let's see type of this uh, operator 
alert and let's try type of my example and let's see what JavaScript will say here function okay alert my example instance of object they're predefined classes already as you can see which allow me to function is the type of my example true alert my example instance of object this is what I was talking about so as you can see my example is an instance of one standard class called object in JavaScript this is what I what I was meaning before okay a function can have properties and has a link back to its constructor method okay let me show you that as well I will uh, allow myself to, to show you that look now the strangest thing I can do here is that I can say function and I will say prop1 equals and I'll give a name for example um, property1 I don't want to blow your mind so um, probably I will stop doing this just uh, showing you how everything looks and just theoretically go quickly through everything what I have to say and after that concentrate on the examples which I think are very important okay uh, let's again use alert or I will uh, teach you how to use something uh, clever something more elegant before we used to use only alert to uh, display variables for example because the JavaScript doesn't have IO input output system it's meant to be used only with the DOOM and this is for security reasons we don't want to allow JavaScript to touch the files on the user's computer that's why JavaScript has been restricted only to work with the DOOM tree not being able to communicate with the file system but for the server-side JavaScript we need such I.O. that's why John, uh, not John Resig, but uh, Node.js is uh, I.O. written for, for V8 this is the JavaScript engine created by Google and Node.js now can be used as a server-side uh, JavaScript you use only one language for the front-end and for the server-side for the client side and the server side which is very very useful console lock actually it's um, now it's a special object which allows us to see all these things in the console all new modern browsers have such thing console for uh, Firefox we have to use a firebug to develop applications and uh, we can see the result of console there for um, uh, Chrome we also have development tools and also have a firebug which we can install as a plugin and use it what I'm gonna use here is the native for Chrome is the native uh, development tool okay so let me show you now my example property as you can see I just assign one property to a function my example it could be even a function function true this is this alert and now look here property one I just want to mention something else I think it's important what you can do is you can type in the console directly as you do in the 
in a terminal window for example for Linux I will uh, show you alert and I'm gonna say here hello world and as you can see it has been executed okay this is our development tool those are things uh, which I think are important for uh, for JavaScript I just show it to you how the um, how the first class object function, one function, can have own properties. Okay, let's continue. You can store a function in a variable. This way of defining function is called statement, function statement, but the function could be uh, defined as a literal. So I'm gonna say var I'm polluting right now the global namespace even though I'm using the keyword var because I'm not into a body of a function so I'm gonna say uh, my global I'm gonna give a value yeah my global function Okay, um, and I will say, for example, return param1. Let's use here param1. Return param1, and I'm gonna call this function this way. I just assign it a function to one variable. So I will be calling this function using this variable. My global my global maybe I should call it function. And here we go. Comes the log. I'm just trying to show you as much as possible for the shortest possible time. comes the lock here it is the function and I'm gonna execute it I'm gonna send uh, for example I'm gonna send my name function this alert message we get from here type of true we get from this row, from this line, and property one we get from this line, and this one we get from this line. Okay, so far so good. I just think I uh, I went ahead of myself, but I'm going to repeat this again in this lection. You can pass a function as a parameter to another function. Let's say uh, I'm gonna define right now another function. I will say function my uh, next function using again statement uh, here I'm gonna say param1 again and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do now return again param1 or what I can do is um, yeah this is enough right now I'm gonna show you only that so here I'm gonna use again alert just for variety I'm just showing you how you can see different things here with alert and console lock I'm gonna call my next function let me use camel cases my next function and as parameter I'm gonna send another function my global function and you'll see 
I hope I didn't blow your mind off so far. As I said, I went too far ahead of myself. So if you have problems accepting that, just wait a little bit. I will try to explain that. So function, true, and look at now. I sent as parameter my global function and after that I returned this parameter and as a result alert just shows me the definition of the function okay so let's forget about all this right now because I hope I didn't blow your mind off and let's continue with the theory I very quickly will go through the theory I'm not gonna get into the details and examples when I talk about that I just will show you the uh, small snippets and uh, we'll get right to the target okay you can return the function from a function I just show you that with the example okay so one example which will show you actually why um, why the function is a little bit strange in JavaScript and why it is the Swiss Army knife for JavaScript because it does almost everything okay here it is the example let's go to Cloud9 I already have done this example so I'm gonna show it here for you We're not gonna mess around anymore with this code, so I'm gonna put it here for later for myself. So let's see what we're doing here. We're finding a function as usual with the keyword function. It's not much different from PHP actually. We again use function, my example, this uh, are polluting the global namespace right now. Example var names, toyan alert name okay if we don't want to pollute an, a global namespace I'm gonna tell you what we can do actually I show it to you already I have to wrap everything what I'm doing all my code in this construction function so look what we are doing here I will create this a body of one anonymous function which gets executed immediately there is another way to do it as well you will achieve the same but I'm showing you this this approach right now which is uh, commonly accepted okay right now my example this function is not a global function anymore because it is defined inside of the body of another function which is anonymous and gets executed immediately by using the execute operator okay so as I said I hope I didn't blow your mind so far look now I'm gonna explain what is going on right now I'm executing first look what we are getting here my first alert is the name of the function itself notice I'm not using the execute operator I mean the round brackets after the name of the function and what I'm getting is as a string the definition of the function the second see the name Stoyan my name I'm getting the function executed here inside of alert so the function gets executed and in the body of the function I have here alert so this alert is executed that's why I'm getting Stoyan now if this function returns a value this value will be shown by this alert but I'm not returning anything so I'm expecting undefined and here we go 
this undefined come from this alert because the function doesn't return anything and the alert just def uh, has nothing to, to show and it shows undefined the next one is my next alert new my example so what I'm doing here is I'm instantiating one object of class my example the function plays the role of the constructor of this class of objects so the, when the constructor gets executed I will get again alert with my name so I'm ex uh, expecting right now to see Stoyan again yeah here we go now during the instantiation of this new object I'm executing the constructor of this class of objects and because into the constructor I have one alert naturally I get this name which is defined inside of the body of this function which is plays the role of the constructor okay and now we'll see the new operator actually creates one object and this object gets returned so I'm expecting here to see a message which contains the word object and here we go object object this is the way JavaScript shows one object this whole example had only one purpose to show you how useful the functions are and the functions are first class objects okay as I said I hope I didn't blow your mind now how can we define a function I already show it to you that but I'm gonna repeat right now okay function defined with the function statement when we use this standard uh, way to define a function standard I'm, I'm talking about the standards in terms of PHP for example or other languages uh, then we use the keyword function we give a name to the function in uh, round brackets we put the parameters which the function will accept and after that we have the function body this way of definition uh, of defining a function is called function statement here it is as I said I don't want to pollute the global namespace because if I define a function here foo will be seen from any from every JavaScript which will be executed on this web page I don't want that so I'm gonna hide it, I'm gonna encapsulate it here function foo when I say polluting the global namespace uh, I'll show it right away actually I'm gonna define the function outside of this construction of the body of this anonymous function just to demonstrate what I mean by polluting the namespace now I will say alert actually let me comment this alerts because they will become too many and we will get confused so I'm gonna say alert and I'm gonna try to show the fun function as I did before the function which is wrapped here in this construction undeclared variable see even the IDE tells me that, that this variable is undeclared because it's not seen here we have to talk about the scope but let's try the second function Foo. see there is no message by the IDE which tries to help me as, mu as much as possible and let's execute it to see the result encode reference error my example is not defined see there is a critical error 
the code even cannot be executed because alert doesn't know about this variable, this identifier of a variable. It doesn't know what it is. Is it a function or is it the objects or whatever it is? It doesn't exist. But alert here, as you can see with foo, works perfectly. Uh, and I'm gonna show you that. See? Okay. So let's make another experiment. Let's move right now foo into this construction and you will see that foo now will become invisible for the alert. Alerts are in the global namespace right now. It's out of the scope. We don't see foo anymore. We'll get errors. So I'm gonna comment this. Okay, so this is a function statement. With a function statement we can define a function. Now, function defined with literal, or literal expression. Literals are all the data which are as they are in the program. For example, literal is a string. Literal are the numbers, integers, floats, Okay, so I'm going to show you the function, the very same function defined using two different approaches. Function statement, and this is the new one, function literal. Here it is. The very same function. Actually, there is no difference. Even the names are the same. This is what I wanted to say. This is what I wanted to show you. Okay. Let me do it here. New variable, f, and I'm assigning to f a new function. No errors, no problems. Okay with the function class. Okay, there is a predefined class of objects function. We can define a function this way as well. It's not recommended, but let's try in Cloud9 and see what happens now. Look now what the ID says, it's evil the function constructor is evil. See? It's not recommended way of creating functions. My function is not used as well. So that's why it's um, it's shown this way. Strike true. Strike true. New function. Those are the arguments. Argument 1, argument 2, and we we have the body of the function defined here. Okay, I'm gonna comment this as well. This is about the definition of the functions. Universal properties and methods. I'm not gonna probably give you examples because this lecture will become too big, too long. My new class length. Okay. Or I changed my mind. Okay, let me show you that. I have one function which is called my example. So let's try length alert my example and I'm gonna say length. See in Cloud9 we even have a code assist or IntelliSense. Let's see what happens now. Ooh. Code type error property length. Of course, it should be like that. It's a property, so I shouldn't rely 
too much on the IntelliSense zero. See, we accept here in this function zero parameters and the my example length gives me the number of parameters the function will accept. Let's put one parameter and see what happens. Let's execute again. I'm expecting one. Yeah, exactly. And I'm getting one. Now, my class prototype. Okay, let me discuss this a little bit uh, a little bit later because this property allows us to do inheritance in JavaScript, but I don't want to get too ahead of myself as I said. Now, the two methods. Immediately when you create a function, you have those properties, they're already defined for us, we can use it, and also two methods, call and apply. Okay, so let me discuss this also a little bit later. I just will tell you that call allows us to execute the function in a different context. This is uh, related to use of a keyword this. In other languages you know that when you use this you mention you mean this object. So when the function gets executed it gets executed in a certain context. With call and apply you actually can change this context. The value of this keyword changes. Okay, so um, let me show you this actually. Let's for example use keyword this in the function my example and say this uh, property equals um, and I'll put my name again. This is one variable internal for this function. In here, oop, property, uh, let, let me make it short, prop one equals stoyan. Okay, let me execute everything make sure that everything works. Now, I want to demonstrate uh, the execution of um, of method call, for example. And I, I will have a second alert here. Which will say this property. Right? Okay. Let's execute the function right now. My example. What we expect is from here the number of parameters which is only one, param one. And when we uh, when we when we execute the function I expect two alerts, name and this property, prop1, against Toyan. 1, Stoyan, against Toyan. That's, that's all. But now, let me execute the function um, in another context. I should actually comment this because it overwrites everything in the context. Okay, let me try now. One stoyan undefined. Okay. This is what I wanted to show you. Now I'm gonna execute this function in another context where I'm gonna define the prop one which I'm displaying. Okay, and I'm gonna do this by calling for example call and I'm sending arguments. When I call a function, the values which replace the parameters are called arguments. Okay, so I'll say my example 
call and I'm calling the function notice now I'm gonna create one object this is uh, object literal and I'm gonna say prop1 property1 I'm gonna say here Nicola and if I want of course I can send uh, an argument let me send just one for example let's see what happens now what I'm expecting to happen is the first time when the function is called here I'm expecting undefined and the second time when I call it here I'm expecting to display Nicola let me try and see if that's true one the number of parameters now I'm expecting undefined from the second execution oops say stoyan yeah that's for the first alert it has nothing to do with the second one the second is undefined this one now I'm expecting here the situation to be slightly different I'm expecting Stoyan and after that Nikola. Let's see if that's true. Stoyan. It comes from here. From the internal variable of the function. And now I'm expecting Nikola. Look. Nikola. See, the function has been executed. It has been bound to another object. By default, the functions in JavaScript are bind to the global object, which is design error, as Douglas Crockford says. Okay, this is about the methods, properties. Oops, I had to tell you about the operators. Type of new class, for example, my new class, this is a function. And I show you already that my new class instance a function. Okay, so I have to attract your attention on function constructors and methods, and after that, we'll continue with operators. So, function constructor I have been forced by the examples and the fact that, that I have started with functions to show you a lot of things and go, as I said, um, ahead of myself. So, uh, function constructor. I just will show you how it looks and after that I will discuss this a little bit later when I discuss uh, objects. Here it is how it looks. Function, I'm using statement in this case, to define a class of object. I'm using a function as a constructor to create a class of objects. My new class, argument1, argument2 eventually. And here I'm using the keyword this. I'm setting a property directly name which is which takes the value stoyan it's initialized with the value stoyan and I'm setting another property family which in, I initialize with my family name and notice this this is a function as a method inside of my function I'm assigning to the property method one uh, another function so this is one example of a function constructor and a function as a method. Okay, So far so good. We'll stop talking about the functions right now. I, I hope I didn't blow your mind and you just have been able to follow me. Uh, now I'm gonna discuss objects and probably you will understand the reason and the purpose of the function constructor and how you can create a class of objects in JavaScript using a uh, function but not a class. Notice, class is a keyword in function in, in JavaScript, but it's not used. By the way, JavaScript 
is one implementation of ECMAScript 5 right now. They have reached the standard 5, number 5 objects. How can we create an object in JavaScript? It's really very simple. Create it as a literal or expression. Here it is. I'm gonna copy this example for you. I'm gonna paste it here. I already explained it why I'm wrapping everything what I'm typing here in a function and I create actually all my objects inside of a body of one function. So here it is. Is this is how simple it is to create an object in JavaScript as a literal or expression. You don't actually need the keyword and um, operator new to create an object, to instantiate an object. You don't need to create first a blueprint of this object in order to instantiate it and create it. You just start from scratch. You just start with one empty object. Empty, of course, is not the right word because each object already has a properties and methods but for, uh, for us as developers it looks empty. We don't have our own properties. And here it is how easy it is to assign a property to this object. As I said and I will mention again I don't need to define first the blueprint for all the instances for all uh, objects as we do for example in Java or C++. We just start creating an object and after that we assign a properties. Okay. Dynamically in the in the program we can assign different properties. And one way to dis to assign a property is with a dot syntax. You just put a dot you mention the name of the property, you set the name of the property and after that you assign a value. Another way is with these square brackets. They are, they are identical, you can use both of them, whatever you prefer. But of course there are slight differences. For example, for dynamic programs when you want this property to change you have to use uh, square brackets. Maybe we'll mention this uh, as one example in the future, maybe not, but just accept that those are equal ways to define a property. My object method. Here it is how simple it is to create a method of one uh, for one object. You just use a dot syntax for example you, and you assign a function, anonymous function. Okay, let me make sure that everything works. Yes, it does. Here I'm gonna actually comment this, all these things, because I don't need them. Uh, I just will keep the the function, the definition of the function outside of the comments, because maybe uh, only the function is the the thing I'm gonna use as uh, for my examples. I will see later. Created with one of the standard classes, object class. Okay, this is the second way we can create an object. I just show you the first way as a literal or example and this is the second way we can create one object. This is identical. Actually, not exactly identical because here I have parameters which I send to the constructor, so uh, two properties already will be assigned. Okay, let's let's try and see. Alert, and I'm gonna say my object argument one. Argument one. undefined but it exists if I remove it let's see what happens
undefined. Oops. Okay. The third way of creating objects is actually the key. The third way is using a function constructor. Now I'm gonna explain why I don't like this method, for example, the first one. Look at now. I just start programming and instead of uh, creating a blueprint and thinking about how my class of object should look like and I defining a class and adding the properties, creating everything, I just start uh, developing. I just create one uh, empty object and I start assigning properties. That's very good for one object. What if, if I want a second object exactly like the first one? I have to repeat all these lines. I have to repeat them again. Instead of doing that, can we do something so this object with all these properties gets created automatically? And after that, if I want, I can augment this object by adding another properties. Of course, this property could be another function, so another method or a scalar value. But can I do that? Can I uh, save myself all this writing? Yes, we can by using a function constructor. Here it is. This is the third way of creating a function. If I uh, define such f such uh, such function, very easy. I can create such objects which have one property prop one name it prop one and value stoyan and one method which accepts two arguments two parameters has two parameters and says says alert arguments. If I have to do this manually, I would do it this way. Wait a second. Yeah, okay, let me comment this because it complains that the ID complains that this object has been already defined, which is true. Let me see again and show you. Here it is. It says, my object is already defined. Yeah, and that's true. Here it is two times. We don't need that. So that's why I'm gonna comment this. Okay, so if I have to do this manually, I would do it this way. Var, let's say I need one object, I will call it object1 equals empty object. And now I have to say object1 I want to have a prop property name prop1 and I want to be initialized with the name stoyan and after that a uh, very same object I want to have a method which is called method1 and I want this method to look like that okay So I'm using the first method, literal or expression, to create, to construct my object. I need one property which is named prop1 and I need one method which is called method1. Uh, I need my property to be initialized the same for the method. Now if I need a second object, object2, which is the very same object like the first one I have to repeat all these steps I have to do this again so I don't want that 
I just want to create my objects very easy way. There is nothing illegal of creating objects like that. It's legal. It's not gonna complain. But as I said, why should I do that? Why should I repeat all these steps? Instead of that, I just create, I just can create one function which is gonna play the role of my constructor for a class of objects. So this is a constructor for a class of objects. And all I have to do afterwards is just say object one equals new and I'm gonna call my class my uh, my constructor. Notice something here. This is a, about the naming standards. Just to make difference between the functions which will play the role of a constructor for one entire class of objects and the functions which are meant to be executed I'm starting the names of the functions constructor with a capital letter Opal camel case for the rest of the functions I'm gonna use just a small letter I'm gonna start with a small small letter and of course I have to start with a verb for example do something uh, set something get something this is very typical I like this naming conven uh, convention okay so I uh, didn't tap, press tap here and to create my second object object 2 instead of going through all these lines imagine if the object is very complex object 2 I'm gonna say here new and again my class extremely extremely easy alert and here I'm gonna say object 1 and I wanna see the property prop 1 I'm gonna say the same for the second object and you'll see that we have the very same properties two times alert this is what we expecting the first one stoyan the second one stoyan as well undefined this com comes from this alert stoyan stoyan okay universal properties and methods and I'm not gonna uh, look here into the details probably I'm not gonna give you too many examples because the time is uh, is running the clock is ticking so to string my object to string it tries to convert the object to string and show you the string value to locale string that means that uh, it tries to show you the locale string for example if this is an, a data date object and uh, I'm in Bulgaria it's gonna show me the date according to my standards if I'm in the States and I'm using a browser which is um, English United States is gonna show me the date according to to United States standard we will say for example January 31st 2013 Bulgarian standard will show uh, will, will tell for example 01st 02 2013 or something object object value of is gonna turn the object to a value to its value has own property this is the way we check if the object has uh, its property by the name of property one property is innumerable property one the way we go through all the properties we iterate through the uh, through the properties is with the for cycle for we use for and uh, some of the properties cannot be displayed uh, 
probably I'm gonna show you this into the example or maybe not but just accept that some of the properties cannot be catched this way so if we wanna check if the property will be catched when we iterate when we loop through all the properties this is what we have to use object is prototype of my object this is how we check if one object is a prototype of another object okay so now operators again we have two operators which I think are very important type of my object it shows you the type of your object if my object instance of my class okay let me demonstrate this uh, I'm gonna show you um, object one instance of alert this operator alert object one instance oops, instance of and I will say my class and you see that it's true because object one is an instance of my class function constructor met a uh, constructor function undefined stoyan stoyan true yeah here we go I'm gonna show you different programming styles. The first one is pseudo classical. Now, which are the uh, four typical characteristics of uh, object oriented programming? Those are inheritance, abstraction, encapsulation, polymorphism. Okay, we say that JavaScript is object-oriented. Um, we're we're going to do object-oriented programming with JavaScript. So, how these things can be implemented in JavaScript? Let's start with the inheritance. Inheritance can be done on a pseudo-classical way. I showed to you that the function is used actually as a constructor for a given class of objects so how can we do that how can we uh, use inheritance in JavaScript this is the answer this is the answer I'm gonna display I'm gonna explain uh, explain that very shortly let me copy the example and put it again here gonna comment this as well let me look at what I have here okay I finished I'm finished with all this um, this snippets so I'm gonna comment them I'm commenting this and I'm not removing because gonna push this to the public repository so everybody will be able to to get the code and I don't wanna create uh, too many different files because we'll get lost I want to have everything in one file I find this much more useful uh, in the examples actually I have all this um, a little bit better ordered so in the mind map if you go to the example one and example two you will see sections for example objects create as literal expression so on and so forth I decided on, on English to base uh, my lesson on mind map and showing you the examples at the same time not separating this be because before my lessons on Bulgarians what I did is I first introduced the theoretical part very shortly and I think I lost the audience and after that I went through the examples then I saw that they waked up because they started to understand something I wasn't in the sky so that's why I decided when I do the lectures in English I'm gonna talk a little bit theoretically and I'm showing you the examples uh, but as you can see this way the example file becomes a little bit messy 
I hope you will uh, navigate using the video which I'm making right now using the mind map and you will be able to find your way so here it is I'm creating one function constructor this function constructor will help me to create a class of objects okay but what if I already have one object and I don't want to recreate all this job I don't want to redo again this job uh, I have one object with all the necessary properties here it is this object and let's say I have uh, name and family here and I wanna just augment this object with few more properties I wanna add a method and here by purpose I, I'm gonna repeat again the uh, the properties name and family I just want to augment this object so in this case I have to use the property prototype of the functions all functions has a property prototype it allows you to inherit one object upon creation upon constructing a new objects of a given class so I have to change here the name uh, not the name but the first letter my new class my new class as I said I'm gonna use the capital letter just to make my new class I'm gonna use a capital letter just to distinguish between the functions meant to be executed and the functions meant to be used with the operator new in order to create a class of objects okay so this is one pseudo classical way of thinking I just can't forget about the fact that uh, JavaScript is a little bit strange and doesn't have uh, the standard way of creating a classes so I'm starting by creating my blueprint my class just imagine that instead of function I'm typing here class after that I give the name of the class my constructor gets two arguments and after that I construct my class here so far so good later on I will be creating objects of this class but now as I said I wanna inherit something I want to inherit an object there is another reason of course to put all these properties in the prototype the prototype is common for all the objects I'm instantiating using my new class so if I change something in the prototype this property for example all the instances will notice that this property will be changed in all the instances but if I instantiate one object of this class and I change the property then this property will be changed only into this instance not in the entire class of object not this group of objects this is another important thing so in the prototype you have to put the properties and the methods which are really common common for our entire class of objects and here in the body of the constructor you have to put the properties which can change from one instance to another instance the third thing you have to do when you do this inheritance is to assign to the prototype 
to its property constructor the name of the function constructor okay this is one style and if I make analogy with the, the nunjitsu and the martial arts I will say for example um, there are a lot of kung fu styles so far when I was talking about the functions and the objects um, I was giving you different um, techniques but here I'm talking about the styles so if I make the analogy with Kung Fu I would say that the pseudo classical method is the method of the tiger for example the second is the style of the eagle or something whatever you can think of and the last one which I call the functional style okay so let me show show you all these styles and after that we'll finish in the second lecture I'm gonna show you the examples probably which are a little bit repetition and I'm gonna show you the uh, the manipulation remoting and dynamic behavior which is the basement which is the base actually not the basement but the base uh, the base for the modern applications Ajax applications we used to call it right now we call it HTML5 okay HTML file is even more it's uh, it's wider it's bigger term buzzword prototypal style this style I saw from um, David Flanagan uh, Douglas Fro Crockford sorry here I have to give him a credit okay I want the same thing I want to create an object which inherits another object how can I do that so Douglas Crockford in one of his lectures brought this idea actually I think it it's in his book uh, JavaScript good parts as well so window object he is using the fact that the object created by the browser window doesn't have a property object that's why he creates one object notice with small letter he creates one property object and he assigns an anonymous function function which gets only one parameter parameter O and notice now what he's doing he's defining a new function inside those are nested functions also I have to mention this term as well so you will know it you won't be surprised when somebody is using it so this is a nested function into the function constructor he calls it F and as you can see it's absolutely empty the body is empty he's using the fact that this function has already one property called prototype and he assigns an object which should be inherited by this function by this object by the newly created object and he creates a new object of class F so what happens in fact is when you call this object you get one object which inherits the object which is sent as parameter it sounds very very complicated but I hope you follow me <laughs> okay so let's refresh again and see that everything works fine yes it does actually we don't expect anything and the third way the third style whatever you wanna call it is functional and just because I wanna demonstrate something I will take this example notice now this is the third way of creating objects let's see here undefined variable unused variable and here again we have we are missing semicolon sorry about that here I'm demonstrating closure this is a real closure which has a static variable it's a very very interesting thing 
actually I'm gonna create one object oops sorry about that I'm creating one object which object will have a static variable and at the same time I'm showing encapsulation counter this property cannot be accessed from outside so I'm as I said because this is a JavaScript basics I don't want to blow your mind but I just have to um, emphasize your attention on the most important thing at least which I think are the most important with uh, with this third style I wanna stop now I will have I wanna wrap up and finish this lecture and um, we'll continue with example which probably will make more sense to you as I said it's a little bit repetition and I'm gonna show you uh, some of the DOOM methods how to do DOOM manipulation remoting which is not of course a DOOM method and the dynamic behavior which is more practical Okay, thank you for your attention um, this is a very long lection I didn't mean that in the beginning this wasn't my intention but uh, I hope you have been able to follow me and um, enjoy the lection maybe it's gonna be useful for somebody else thank you for your attention see you next time